All right, kids, there are times when a topic comes up and I feel like there are more important matters to be discussed. Then there are topics that I simply don't want to talk about, whether it's because it's already been covered or we can't cover it enough. And there are topics that I don't feel qualified to talk about. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a professor, or an expert, so maybe I shouldn't be offering my opinion. Well, people are getting canceled for saying racist stuff, and here we are. And that includes using the N-word, which is our topic for today. And see, I didn't say it, and I'm black. If there's anything I'm qualified for, it's to say that word, depending on how you look at it. One-on-one -on -one discussions about the N-word are doable. Group discussions are manageable. Race-to-race -race conversations are negligible. I mean, it's difficult to reconcile this word in my own mind. I mean, sometimes I say to myself, well, I can't expect others not to say it if I say it, which turns into me hoping that people won't say it. But most of all, I wish. I wish somebody would say it. Before I continue, if you're wondering if I use the N-word and how I feel about it moving forward, there's this. Chances are I'm gonna end up in jail in my 70s anyway for saying something that's fine now but will be punishable by death in 40 years, <laughs> like calling my kids the N-word or calling my wife the N-word or calling some white lady the N-word. <laughs> <laughs> Your kids? So today, let's talk about it. Let's talk about this word that is used in order to describe a specific person or a kind of person, also a specific behavior. It's a noun, a prefix, an adjective. Let's talk about why non-black people get in trouble for saying it and what they could be saying instead. Unforgettable, unsubmittable, I go by N now, just one syllable. It's complicated. At its best, the N-word is a term of endearment shared between people. At its worst, the N-word is the most despicable term in the English language. A number of black people say it, others don't. It may be okay for Latin people to say it. Some may need permission. Is permission something that we can give and take away? Whatever the case, telling white people that they can't say it may come off to them as discrimination or reverse racism. Then there are racial epithets towards white people, which I also won't say at this time. And while they are also things that shouldn't be said and are unfortunate, they should never be compared to the end. And I shouldn't have to discuss moral equivalency, nor should I have to go through the history of this word. We know what it is and we know what it means. And it doesn't matter if it ends in ER or A. Of course, saying the N-word is a big deal when you aren't black because it's a racist act. That should go without saying. And like all racist acts, these things get weighted by severity. With that said, I think it's important to differentiate someone who is racist from someone who has committed a racist act. But these things add up. Sure, saying the N-word once, as far as volume in the racist act scale, isn't as heavy as, say, leaving a noose in Bubba Wallace's garage a few days after NASCAR prohibited Confederate flags. But if you're listening to music and you say every N-word to the song for which this YouTube channel is named after, then yes, your cup would overflow. So this lady who made a video as a response to herself being called out for saying the N-word is one thing. That was racist. Using a black child and your friendship with that child to state that you're not racist is another and is more racist. Tell them your name. Tanaya. Okay, see, and aren't you my best friend at work? Yes. So I'm not racist. <laughs> people, That's good. People That's good. think I'm really racist. Are you serious? Because like there was a video on here and I said, I sang the N word, but I didn't. So this lacks intent and wasn't premeditated. So it isn't racist to the first degree, but she did commit black slaughter. I need to clarify. We can't just look at saying the N word as a singular act, even if it was just once. Because if this was said in a video on social media, a public forum that millions of people can potentially see, then you know it gets said when no one's watching. Evidence of that is in Kyle Larson saying the N-word a few months ago. He did it so easy, so casually when he was comfortable around people he knows. I bring this up because I included this in a story that I made at that time. So when it comes to non-black celebrities saying the N-word, these instances often have the same look and feel. Maybe it was something they said on Twitter in the past, and then they're saying it while singing or rapping a song. All of this goes back to why I didn't want to talk about this in the first place, because I, or any other person with a viable platform, would have to constantly speak up and out about this knowing that our efforts aren't a big enough levy to keep the use of the N-word from flooding everything. Tanisi Coast addressed this the best way possible three years ago. The question one must ask is why so many white people have difficulty extending things that are basic laws, you know, of how human beings interact to black people. And I think I know why. The use of the N-word by non-black people should have been over then. So I'll paraphrase some of his points. We understand when someone is called a pet name by a significant other. If we are not in that relationship, then we don't call them that name. 
We understand that there are nicknames amongst a family and group of friends, and if we are not a part of that family, then we don't call them that name. And these examples indicate relationships. Are you a part of the family? You have a black friend. These things aren't racism erasers, nor does it explain why some people want to say this word. And I'll admit that not all skin folk is kin folk, but do these less melanated people share in our suffering? Part of our suffering come from this word. So kids, you may also ask yourselves, do they want to say the N-word in order to be a part of the culture? Because we know that non-black people care more about black culture than black people. Since everybody wants to be black until it's time to be black, I want to give you a synopsis. This is my minority report. Now, I'm not going to say that white people have any clue about being a minority, let alone a black person. However, those who are peacefully protesting right now may be getting a fraction of it now that their efforts are being likened to that of the 2%, you know, rioters and looters. To the white people who haven't protested, donated to a cause, or signed a petition, they want to say the N-word, but we can't get them to shut down their uncle who has a Confederate flag on his truck, is upset that the Confederate monuments and statues are being taken down, but has the nerve to tell black people to get over slavery? Speaking of the enslaved, I've been fortunate enough to have been invited to a Seder meal. I've seen how the Jewish community marks Passover to commemorate the exodus from Egypt. They want to say the N-word, but can they defend black people when someone says that we can't be successful because we're stuck in the past and too focused on chattel slavery? East Asian and South Asian people. Are they recognizing the model minority for what it is? A myth. They want to say the N-word, but are they dismantling this thing that white people came up with in order to put a wedge between us? The model minority myth simultaneously makes black people look inept, while also making the majority of the Asian American community look bad. Latinx people and Hispanic people. In America, they go through similar things as black people. They feel like they can use the N-word. Are they doing something about colorism? Are the darker skinned people among them treated like black people? If Kendrick Lamar invited these people on stage today in order to spit a verse of his, they would know all of the lyrics, of course. And they would be fully prepared to use the N-word, but can we get them to speak up for the culture? Black culture is one of resilience, overcoming, empowerment, joy, and freedom. And flipping the N-word was part of it. We are fighting against police brutality, social injustice, and racial inequality, and the N-word is a part of it. So again, I don't know why non-black people even want to say this word. It's obvious that there are people who want to say it and use it for which it was created, and white people created it, so I guess it's weird to take it from its inventors and then tell them that they couldn't use it. But I'm seeing that it's not that people can't censor themselves, they either don't want to or don't feel that they have to. And it's not that they don't know, they just don't care. I want to be able to end this video resolving the issue and providing you with a call to action, but if non-black people being guilty of racism in the court of public opinion, losing their jobs and sponsorships, getting reprimanded by friends and canceled on the internet won't do it, then what can I say to the two of you to change things? You know, as much as this video is about the N-word, it's also about N-word. I've said it several times today and people know it can be an alternative. Fact is, if black people stop saying the N-word in order that others won't say it, you better believe they will continue to say it. It won't make any difference. And I would love it if black people would begin to call each other king and queen or brother and sister. Then it wouldn't matter if it ended or E-R or A. But we're going to be all right. Here cut that.